Madam President, ladies, gentlemen, friends, colleagues, and fellow graduates. To begin with, I'd like to thank everyone who's put together today's ceremony and the many different members of the SAAS community who have made today possible. From parents, carers, and family who provide an infinite source of inspiration and love, to the faculty members, support staff, security staff, and cleaners who keep the institution running, and to the academics whose subtle mentorship has brought us here today, we thank you. Before I began as a student here at SOAS, I fondly remember events and nights held in the JCR. Somehow I found myself as a 16, 17 year old in SOAS, unsure what the slightly odd yet magical place was. In, sh in, my, short and open, in my short and informal open day, I'd encountered students discussing a secret sauna in the SOAS gym, <laughs> smelt the haze of what didn't seem like cigarette smoke, <laughs> and overheard SOASians debate on whether showers were a social construct. Despite all of this, I knew this was a place where I wanted to study. And five years later, four years as a student and one year as a co-president of the Students' Union, I'm blessed enough to give you this vote of thanks today. SOAS began its centenary celebrations this year. And what began as a colonial institution has of course changed and evolved over time. Its slogan, knowledge is power, has evolved too. It's the university which decides what is considered real or legitimate knowledge. As we leave the university, this will apply to most of the things we do in life. Publishing firms decide who deserves to be published. Media outlets deem what is worthy of news and what is not. And some of us, as I have begun to do, are applying for graduate schemes, painstakingly constructing our cover letters and CVs for powerful firms to decide whether we deserve to be hired or not. Power is one of those unavoidable realities of the world. Some of us are lucky enough to access it, some of us less so. And we are never going to live in a world without it. History and world events this year particularly have shown us what misplaced power or power in the wrong hands has done and is doing. But one of the things I've learned during my time at SOAS is how beautiful it is when power is challenged or redistributed. Whether it's seeing the cleaners challenging management to be treated as equal members of the SOAS community, or students starting the discussion on what the process of decolonizing an institution would look like. From SOAS students mobilizing to join, to join the marches to shut down in immigration detention centers like Yarlswoods, to students mobilizing to provide food, aid, and other essentials to refugees in Calais. These moments make me, to, make me proud to have been a part of SOAS. It is in these moments where I, feel, where I feel I have learned the most. I'll never forget the hour-long conversations in the JCR or the corridors of SOAS, which for me were as valuable as the lectures or tutorials. This might be because I'd missed these lectures because I was having these hour-long conversations somewhere else, <laughs> but still, the point still stands. Learning takes place in many different ways. We go through processes of education throughout our time here informal and formal, both in class and outside. Whether it's at the bus stop, talking with a stranger, or stumbling upon a book in the SOAS library which wasn't on our curriculums. Knowledge, and more importantly, wisdom, can come from the most unexpected sources. Sometimes these sources aren't considered legitimate by society, but are worth their weight in what they give us. In one of the student union, lecture did, lecture, when one of the student union lectures we put on this year, Internationally acclaimed writer Teju Cole told us that his grandma knew more than most of his college professors. Teju explained that his grandma's lived experiences, underlined by her race and class, informed her education in different ways. So we might not be qualified enough to society standards to challenge power, but that should not stop us from speaking truth to it. Despite entering an insecure world, the phrase knowledge is power which usually alludes to domination and subjugation, can be used to empower us moving forward. We make our mark on the world, not like the colonists of 100 years ago who left the institution, but today to absorb, listen, learn, and center the voices who weren't lucky enough to be in the room with us today. Thank you for listening, and congratulations.